You ask, we answer. Welcome to Exercising Health's Q&A. Steve Han 49 asks, is creatine the best supplement to help recover from sore muscles? Before answering this question, I first want to debunk a common myth. Creatine is not a steroid. It is actually a compound naturally found in meat and fish protein and does not have direct anabolic effects. If this was so, it would be banned in competitive sports by the World Anti-Doping Agency and removed from supplement store shelves. Creatine is the most studied supplement on the planet with countless papers on its effects in different exercise protocols. And because of the abundance of information on the supplement, I came across some contradicting evidence, which is natural with such a well-researched topic. In such cases, you have to try to find the common trend or theme behind all the noise. So this is what I was able to decipher. Creatine is first and foremost an energy source. It fuels the phosphocreatine pathway, which is the energy system we use in short, high-intensity exercise. So let's think Olympic weightlifting, sprinting, powerlifting, and any other pure anaerobic activity. Even the golf swing can be fueled by creatine. How creatine works in these activities is by saturating the muscle with this fuel so that they have enough energy for continued contraction and are consequently less likely to fatigue. Secondary to this and to answer the research question, creatine has been found to decrease muscle soreness and increase recovery time. <coughs> Correction, creatine was found to decrease recovery time. Moving on, even in endurance athletes, one of the ways it does this is by protecting certain cells from oxidative stress and cell death. Because when we exercise, especially really hard, our cells die off and we then have to make new ones. This is a slow process and means that we need time between exercise sessions for recovery. So creatine lessens cell death, which means that we need less recovery time. But before you turn off this video and go buy your tub of Creos, there is a side effect to all of this and you guys need to know about it. In a study done on mice with induced asthma, creatine was found to exacerbate their symptoms as opposed to improve them like the researchers hypothesized. This was interesting because creatine cell protecting ability was detrimental in this case. The inflammatory prone cells were able to live longer and continue damaging the lung's ability to function properly. So basically you end up with a case of too much of a good thing is bad. Now granted the study was only done on mice and may not directly relate to humans. But when you look at the prevalence of asthma in the general population, it sits at around 10% whereas that percentage increases up to 50% in professional and non-professional athletes of certain sports. Creatine also happens to be one of the most popular sports supplements, either through direct consumption via creatine monohydrate or indirectly through animal proteins. Now, it would be foolish to say with certainty that the higher levels of asthma in athletes is directly related to the increased usage of creatine supplementation, but the parallel is certainly noteworthy. Those are the facts, and based on them, I'm sure many people want to know if creatine is still the right fit for them and their training. I would like to offer my opinion on this. Not advice, just an opinion. I feel that when it comes to health, nutrition, and exercise, everyone's needs are unique and different. Gone are the days of a one-size-fits-all approach. After all, look around you. Everyone is unique and different. So, in the case of creatine, we know that meat and fish are our main natural food sources. If, for example, you are following a vegetarian or vegan type diet, chances are you may have lower than normal creatine levels by default. In this case, supplementing with a synthetic form like creatine monohydrate could be highly beneficial for you. Scenario two, you're a high level Olympic weightlifter who is training twice a day and struggles to maintain that type of volume. In this case, added creatine through supplementation may give you the fuel you need to handle such an intense regime. 
Scenario three, you follow a balanced three to five day per week exercise program. Eat plenty of meat and fish, as well as take regular rest days when you feel beat up. I'm sure that the majority of the sports community fall into this camp. I honestly don't see the need for creatine supplementation with this type of lifestyle. In fact, I could see the risk of overnutrition in this regard. The term overnutrition basically refers to consuming excessive amounts of a specific nutrient. This paradigm has gained a lot of traction recently and some scientists have even compared its adverse effects to malnutrition. The most common example of this is in the case of type 2 diabetes, where excessive consumption of sugars and other refined carbohydrates causes the body to become insulin resistant. Excessive being the key word here. So coming back to creatine consumption, if you're getting enough from your diet for your specific exercise needs, consuming more through supplementation may end up hurting your health. But those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours. So leave a comment down below and let's start a conversation. Cheers.